Hello everybody, it's Mike here okay, from Scratch, and I am here announcing the birth of another game engine. This one's called the Toy Game Engine, or the Toy Engine, and this is a thin light C++ game engine. And I know a lot of people out there are going, no, no more game engines. I'm not one of them. I love them. I love as many choices as possible, but this one actually is filling a niche that isn't really that well served. So that part is quite cool. And this is, again, very C++ focused and towards the coder. So if you wanted a lightweight C++ game engine, but you're all about the coding, you're not about the editing, like in a, you know, Unreal Engine with all these big tools and such, you wanted to more have something down like closer to the source code level, this is the engine for you. Or I suppose I should say, this will be the engine for you potentially, because this guy is, under heavy development, not yet stable, fully documented or production ready, and they're not lying. Very much so, this is a crashy engine at times. Um, it is early, uh, this is the first release of it, and you know, set your expectations accordingly. But what's there is actually quite interesting already. Now it's available at toyengine.io. Of course, I'll toss links down below later on, so don't worry too much about that. Uh, but you can see here the, the kind of the the key traits of this thin usable C++ engine is basically it's component based, it's got a user interface layer, uh, it's got a full renderer or zero cost scripting, you're gonna hear zero cost a lot. And that's kind of one of those C++ mantras. If you don't need it, you don't pay for it. Um, so you got a scripting layer, I uh, believe it uses Lua for now with Ren and C Sharp as upcoming features potentially. Um, there is editor for both text and visual scripts. We've got zero cost tooling. We'll see the tooling very briefly in a second, but we've got, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, object inspector, outliner, a script editor, visual script editor, prefab editor, particle editors, um, all under active development, uh, sound support, PBR rendering, uh, there's physics built in, it's the, uh, the bullet physics en uh, engine, uh, nav mesh support, and they've got a bunch of examples you can see, so you can check it out in your browser. I'll see that in a second. Um, and as you can see here, it supports a number of different platforms, uh, Mac, Linux, Windows, uh, Android, and I believe iOS. And then on top of that, we have HTML5 support. And on that topic, if you wanna check it out immediately, there are a number of different examples already available on the site. So go to the example section, and these will run directly inside of your browser. Now again, early access, some of these are a little crashy at times, so set your expectations accordingly, but you can get an idea of what the game engine is capable of. So we'll go ahead and start that, sync our mouse in, and here you see kind of a third person shooter setup. Whoa, I'm drifting. All right, so I think I'm going to die. So as you can see, there are some issues with it at times, but all right, I need to get out of full screen to close this. Uh, it does give you an idea of what the engine is capable of today, plus you can get full source code to all those examples we just looked at now. Now the Toy Engine source code is available on GitHub, and I'm gonna talk about the first real huge negative, and this is a gigantic, ginormous, unbelievable negative in my world, currently the license. And um, I've talked to the developer, first off the developer on Twitter has been very reactive, I spoke to him a little bit yesterday about a couple of glitches I ran into, and he almost immediately fixed them. He also claims that the license is going to be changed shortly or in the future. So this is not set in stone. This is like, if, if I was a vampire, you'd be like, <sighs> uh, GPL. I, I hate the GPL license, especially for something like a game engine, because it renders it basically useless to most people. Um, GPL is that one, you know, people that call it um, the uh, parasitic license or the infective license. Uh, and the, yeah, that's basically it. Once you've touched GPL code, you've got to start GPLing all your own code in turn. It's great for things like operating systems where you want, you know, the community to work together on it. But with things like game engines, that makes it basically impossible to create a closed source game using this engine. So hopefully that changes immediately or that renders this game engine useless to the vast majority. But I think he's just trying to figure out exactly where he's going with it and then he's gonna make it to a more permissive license. He's already on record having said that. I would have rather he just at least started with LGPL at least, and then went from there. Uh, but yeah, that, so that's the huge negative at this point in time. We come on down here, you can see a bit more of a description on the GitHub page of the, um, 
the goals and the features of this actual engine. And then we can go ahead and actually install it. I'm gonna do that now. I'm basically show you the, the process of getting it up and running. The toy engine is pretty easy to get going with. Just come on in here to GitHub. Again, I will toss this link down below. Well, this link, not this one. But this is the Git link you want. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is fire up a trusty terminal. And of course, just like everything else I do, let's toss this into my temp folder. Let's make this a little bit bigger so you can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, I think it's a properties and let's go to a font and let's go with 28 point. You should be able to see that. Hopefully that's more visible. So now what we want to do is go ahead and do a git, a clone, paste that in right there and do recursive. Make sure you do recursive so that we get all of the other required projects to come in and let that run. It actually downloads a fair bit. Now, the actual toy engine is quite small, but it has dependencies on a number of different libraries, including, as I mentioned, the bullet physics library. On the back end, it uses Ogre 3D, it uses um, oh, BGFX, it uses you know a number of different libraries. You're gonna see as it starts pulling them in. So um, resolving all of those dependencies is going to take a bit of time. So at that time, we'll talk briefly about MUD. Now, MUD is the low-lying uh, technology that this is built over top of. So if you're just looking for a low-level cross-platform framework for C++ development and you want to build your own engine, you could check out MUD. In some ways, uh, the toy engine is really reminding me of the Banshee engine and the MUD uh, framework really reminds me of the BS framework. Now, those are both things I've covered already on the channel. So if you're interested in another code-based low-level C sharp or C++ based game engine, there is also Banshee slash BS framework. And these two are kind of scratching the same itch. So if you want a direct competitor, those are about as close as I can get between the two. Um, yeah, so this is gonna take a couple more seconds. So instead of just watching this with the power of pause, I will be right back. Oh, actually, I think it might be done. Uh, mud was last. Oh, no, it's going to pull a couple sub modules, but this is only going to take a second. So I won't pause. And done? Done? Not done. Uh, all right, to hell with it. I'm going to pause. Apparently, there's a bit more to do. All right. We are now done. It took about three more minutes, four more minutes. Uh, but once you got that, you should be able to go into the toy. Ooh, I am on the wrong screen. All right. Here we go. So CD into the toy directory like so. Uh, what you are now looking for is the bin folder. So go into bin and then now it comes down to your platform. So as you can see, you can build this on both Linux and Windows. Today I am going with Windows and it uses a product called Genie for building this. It's a lot like CMake. Uh, so what we're gonna do is do a Genie and then you tell it what compiler version you've got. Now what I wanna do, oops, I just pressed the wrong thing. What I want to do is build for 2017. Of course, if you had Visual Studio 2015, you would do this, but 2017 like that. And what this will do is basically create the projects for us. Now you'll notice those were created in our root. So we go back to the toy folder like so, and you will now see we have a build folder. We go into the build folder and you'll see we have a projects folder. Go into the projects folder and you will see we have a Visual Studio 2017 or 2015, depending on your world. Now keep in mind, you can also do this in Linux, but the process is obviously a bit different because you're using GCC Make. Uh, but now let's go ahead and run our project. So you can see right here, it is toy.sln, or we can bring down the individual C Sharp or C++ projects, but we'll just load the top level. So obviously at this point in time, you need to have a Visual Studio installed on your machine. Both are available for free. Um, also need to make sure that you have the uh, C Sharp, the C++ stuff in configured. So you need to have a C++ mode installed if you're using Visual Studio 2017. I think it's smart enough to tell you, but I was gonna go through and parse out all of our projects. Here you go. So you can see it's broken up into the various different dependencies. Our examples are here under bin. Now I found the source code layout to be a little strange at times, especially for the examples. Trying to figure out exactly where things lie in the actual source code folders can be a bit confusing at times. Uh, but you'll see here, basically you've got your library layer source code is here. So mud is the lower level uh, cross-platform foundational layer that the toy is built on top of. Here is toy itself. Come on in here, you'll see the source code is pretty clean and straightforward. So let's go to core and bring up a file. Um, entity, there. Ooh, I got that in super big presentation mode, don't I? So you can see it's clean, modern style, C++. It's, it's nothing really shocking going on. It's, it's pretty easy to understand code. Um, it's not, overwhelmingly documented, as you can see. Actually, is there a single comment in this file? 
Nope. <laughs> okay, so there's not an exceedingly huge amount of comments. There is some documentation if you go on back over to the website. And obviously that is a work in progress part, but um, you do actually have a number of snippets available. And you also, that's not it. We head on back over here. The documentation is the documentation on this page. On this page, uh, there is decent documentation on uh, how you do various different things. Plus, there's a number of different snippets that show you how you would accomplish things. Like here is the example code for, uh, for example, rendering a cube, and uh, they're all pretty clean. On top, of, there is some documentation. I'm just not finding the links as of yet, but it's in here somewhere. It's not. Uh, is not overflowing yet, early state in the project. So expect that to develop over time. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and build this guy. We're gonna be working with this example later. So I'm gonna set that as my startup for now. So EX platform. And what we shall do is do a build. Now this is of course C++, so this isn't going to be an instant process. Building doesn't take that much time, but it takes enough time that it'll make this a boring video to watch. So just for the record, I started the build off at 9.17 a.m. and I will be back in a couple of seconds. Minutes, minutes. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, so we're back, uh, 9.26, so it takes a little bit of time. Took enough time that I checked out the world news and now I'm depressed. All right, anyways, let's jump in now. So we've got it built, you see, our uh, built's just fine, no errors at all. And now let's just jump here into that platform example. Now this is actually the exact sample we saw a second ago. This is the one where you're basically a third person shooter. We've got a couple other here, <coughs> um, a 3D character here, we'll show something new. So I'll go ahead, set this one, uh, let's do a debug on it and get an idea of what a couple of the examples are like. And this is a, what's your issue? Okay, not sure what that error was. Okay, this runs just fine on my other computer, so I don't know what's going on here. One second. So we've got a couple things going on here, and I'm not entirely certain it's not my computer to blame here. Now, the IG8 ICD is the um, loadable component of your OpenGL driver. And you can see here, if we go back to the, um, the launch window for when I'm launching this actual application, it seems that I'm, for some reason, GLFW is failing to create an OpenGL context. And all right, so the downside is this machine's been a little flaky for a while and I probably need to do a reinstall on it. The drivers may be out of date. I'm not sure what's going on here, but I do know it runs just fine on my other machine. So what I'm going to do is basically do a really brutal cut edit here and I will switch machines and we will be right back. So uh, basically this may be the fact that we're using a heavily underdevelopment game engine or this could be a device driver issue on my machine, such as the joy of working with OpenGL in general, to be honest. So I will be back in a little bit uh, and show you this running. All right. And I'm back. Different computer, different room, different microphone, but same project. And now what we're going to do again is go into our platform example right here and just do a debug on it. So start it up. Bum, 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 bum. And here you see, oh, actually, you know what? I had the same error there. But it seems to be loading just fine, at least on this machine. So this is kind of what you get. Now, what I've done is I've made one small change to the code, and I'll show you that in a second. We can go ahead and we can press play here, and we'll see our project running. There you go. So there is our third-person shooter. Oh, and I, I got killed. So apparently I'm not very good at this demo, but you can see it in effect. But what I wanted to show you this for is I'm going to hit escape here and cancel out. So what you'll see now that it's populated, we have a full-blown um, scene graph here of items in our scene. Uh, you can see the objects that make them up. You can go ahead and uh, add components to them. So I, let's see if I expand this out here. No, that doesn't do anything. All right, see over here, we can create new entities in the world. So click here, we create a new entity of the various different types that are supported. So you see here, you've got this lightweight level editor built in. Now it is also incredibly very, very much early. For example, I don't know that I can actually get a, rid of this in any way whatsoever now that it's open. Um, so obviously, it is very early and I probably shouldn't demo it and much more detail than now, but you do get the idea. There's actually a editing environment that your games can run within that will be coming along and that's where you would script your code, etc. I didn't like being shut down that way. Uh, but in order to go ahead and open that, you have to go into, so you go into your project, 
in this case, I'm going to go with platform. Uh, I believe the code was under jams or was it under mud? Like I said, I find their the way that they've arranged their source code a little confusing at times. Yeah, so it's under jams platform, but basically go into this guy right here, this example platforms.cpp, find your main, like so, and comment out that line and comment that line if you just want to have it run directly to the game or if you want to run it through the editor. So you can see your game is actually being hosted in a live editor. Kind of a cool feature, but again, it's very young. <laughs> so um, give it some time for that to mature, definitely. Uh, but there's the kernel of a really cool, lightweight C++ cross-platform modular game engine here. Just do expect some more, some crashes, some bugs, some driver issues, etc. It's early, it's young. Um, so basically, the developer has said their next month is all focusing on polish and bug fixes and refinements and such. And as I said earlier, I, I reached out to him on Twitter about a couple of things. Actually, he reached out to me. I responded back to him. I made a suggestion. He immediately actually implemented it. So he's very responsive. Um, they've also got a... Um, I think it's a Slack, might be making that up, but there's a way to contact them directly off of their webpage and he's responsive in there as well. So if you do run into problems or you do have suggestions for the engine, so far he has been very, very responsive. Uh, so that is the toy engine. Uh, definitely an interesting project. If you're into the whole C++ thing and you wanna get a little bit closer to the code uh, and you're willing to work with an in-development engine, this one might be an interesting project for you to check out. Um, it'll be interesting to see where he goes. Again, he just released this a day ago, so um, and he, he even personally admits he rushed it out to get their people playing with it. So do give it a bit of time to mature, but do, if you have suggestions, reach out to the developer. He's been very, very good with his uh, responses. Now, the only thing that I'm really, my, my number one huge biggest suggestion straight out is get rid of that GPL. Get rid of that GPL as fast as possible because that is a toxic poison and people are going to stay away until it is gone. So if you're thinking about changing it in the future, I, I would highly recommend you just do that now. Now, maybe don't go all the way towards MIT because you might have a different idea in the future, but even LGPL. LGPL allows you to productize this later on if you wish to, but it allows people to actually start using it and not be completely screwed. So uh, my number one complaint on this engine right now is definitely that license is garbage. So hopefully uh, that change happens quickly and people aren't pushed away from it. Um, because I just honestly, I don't think a game engine and GPL work. Um, you know, we've seen a couple in the past and they're all gone now. So there's a good reason for that. So hopefully that is taken into account. But definitely it's a cool looking engine and one I recommend you check out. Are you looking for a low level C++ engine? Does this look appealing to you? Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.